Hi there, this is Danny, and the channel is You and Me Living Free. I'm not talking about hiking today, and I'm not talking about traveling. I'm actually back in Kansas City at a little park by my house. I'm in my car. You notice I have a back seat. <laughs> I'm not even in the van. I'm getting ready for a great big trip, starting with the Albuquerque Balloon Festival, which I cannot wait. I'm beyond excited about that. But that's a story for another time. Today, I really want to talk about intuitive eating. I have started the book and the workbook. I introduced the topic in a video that I did a little while ago called Food Became My Everything. And so if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link at the end of this video for, for that very first video and for this whole playlist. And so Food Became My Everything. So I'm on a journey now. I'm on a quest to heal my relationship with food, to put food in the right place in my life, to give, bring my perspective back to it, that eating and food can be enjoyable, they can be a, a good, a great part of life, um, and they nourish my body. They nourish the, every cell in my body and my growth in, in every way and not this, ro this role that food has taken on in my life, which is, you know, my companion, my comforter, my, um, you know, my muse almost, you know, kind of my, my solace, my everything. When I, when I don't want to feel an emotion, when I feel too much emotion, when I'm happy, when I'm sad, <laughs> I turn to food a lot. And I'm just done with dieting. So, so intuitive eating is the thing, is the path that I have chosen to try. I have tried every diet in the world, so I was done with diets. So this is what is next and hopefully the first and last thing I'm really going to do. Here is what the book looks like because uh, there are a lot of books out there with the words intuitive eating in the title, but this is like the kind of the Bible. This is the original. This is where it all started. And since this book was initially published, which was a long time ago, there have been many studies. It has inspired many studies to try to prove or disprove kind of some of the things that they are talking about. And it's full of studies of factual information and the data and the information to back up all of these claims and everything. But before we even dig into any of that, I, I just want to have a couple of quick disclaimers. Disclaimer number one is, of course, I am not a medical professional. I don't want to advise anybody on anything. I'm not making suggestions for your life. That's up to each and every individual person, and we all have to decide for ourselves. You know, talk to your doctor, do whatever you need to do, and I want, just want to get that out of the way. Number two is I want to be really clear that I'm not trying to convince anyone that intuitive eating is the way or the only way or the way for them. It's It's we're all in different places in our lives. We all have different things that will work. I, I truly believe that. And so whatever path you're on is great. This is only, this whole playlist really is only for people who find themselves in a similar place to me, just in the headspace of I'm done with dieting. I want to live a full and healthy life. And I have developed some poor habits, some poor rules, some poor, some guilt, some shame, some just negativity around eating and around dieting and around all and, and, and food and the role that it plays in our lives. So that's where I am. And I, I think that anyone who's going to be really interested in this material is going to be in a similar place. So if you are on some kind of diet and you love it, great. If you are on what you call a healthy plan and you 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 love it and you don't call it a diet, great. This is this is only for people who this really resonates with and I would just say check out the material for yourself. I'm making this video for two reasons. Number 1, I'm a verbal processor, right? And for anybody who doesn't know what that means, it's like 
When I talk about something, when I hear myself say it, when my brain goes through the work of putting, of laying it out in, in kind of a logical sequence at all, I start to put the pieces together in my mind. I process things very well as I speak them. So it's really helpful for me to talk things out even with this video, because I know that I see all the people behind it. I, 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 on my channel, I have, I have people who are subscribers who've been with me for a while, who we have ongoing conversation. They share parts of their lives. I share part of mine. There's connection there. And so when I make a video, I'm not just talking to myself. I really am, you know, projecting this. And, and it's also, it's for anyone who is so frustrated and so done with the whole dieting lifestyle and challenge and endless, um, I'm getting a picture of like a treadmill in my mind, right? Just that it's so exhausting to, to be on so many diets and everything. So, so this is really, so I'm taking a long time to introduce the topic, right? But it's all, it's all good stuff. It, it really is. If this is resonating with you, great. So I'm going to briefly read to you one paragraph from the opening of this chapter. Or from principle one in the book, which is actually chapter six. Reject the diet mentality is the name of the principle and of the chapter. Reject the diet mentality. Throw out the diet books and magazine articles that offer you false hope of losing weight quickly, easily, and permanently. Get angry that diet culture promotes weight loss and the lies that have led you to feel as if you were a failure every time a new diet stopped working and you gained back all the weight. If you allow even one small hope to linger that a new and better diet or food plan might be lurking around the corner... It will prevent you from being free to discover intuitive eating. <laughs> this whole kind of principle is, is wrapped up in this paragraph exquisitely. And so it talks about so many of the important things. And that's number one, the research, everything points to the fact that diets don't work. 95 to 98% of diets and dieters who lose weight will gain it back and then some. There have been so many studies that show this. And yet we still reach for another diet. Why? <laughs> I can answer for myself. You know why? <laughs> Knowing 95% of diets don't work because I'm like, I'm, what if I'm in the 5%? What if I'm in the 5%? That's one thing that keeps me going. And the second thing that would keep me going on diets is I just didn't do the right diet yet. I would be done with diets and then I would hear about a new diet. My last one, the last one I did was intermittent fasting. I'm like, that's not really a diet. Well, it is a diet. Any Anything that is giving you rules to follow and trying to shrink your body is a diet, basically. That's kind of loosely how the book describes it. So, <laughs> so for anyone out there who is still believing that there is the perfect diet around the corner, that there is a set of rules that if you will just follow, will, will make your dreams come true, will give you everything that you want for your body, for your life, for whatever. If you're still in that space, then you're not going to be open enough to be free to re kind of rewire. This whole process with intuitive eating seems to me to be like a rewiring of the brain. It's an entire process to bring us back to the way we uh, naturally would eat, which is to eat when we're hungry, to eat what our body wants, to stop when we're full. That's all that our natural way of being trying to kind of impose that on ourselves with guilt and with shame and with rules about eating this or that or whatever is all counterproductive. Another thing that's majorly counterproductive is looking at intuitive eating or anything with a goal of weight loss. Here's what I mean by that. 
I know that at optimal health, I, I don't think I will weigh, if, if I were optimally healthy, I have to be careful about the language here. If I were at my optimal level of health, I know I would not weigh what I weigh now. Now, that doesn't mean that people can't be healthy at bigger sizes, anything like that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying for me, there isn't some prescribed number that's okay and another number that's not okay. So weight loss is not the goal. You see how if the whole process of intuitive eating is getting you to listen to the cues of your body, to honor that, respect that, to go within and to trust the body, that the body knows what to do, the body knows what it needs. And so I, I want to strip away everything that is in the way of that. And believe me, I've got a bunch of stuff to strip away. <laughs> I've got a bunch of stuff to strip away. I have so much baggage around this topic. So weight loss might be a result, an end result, a byproduct. Look at it. That's how I'm trying to look at it as kind of a byproduct. It, it may happen, but it cannot be the goal because the whole goal is about intuitive signs and everything. So where does, oh, I need to lose weight or what should I do to bring the number down? That doesn't enter into it because you're. it's a completely different um, different process. I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't confuse that too much because it's really a big one for me and I wanted to get rid of the scale at home, but there is someone in my house who really wants to keep the scale because for me, the scale is a big, I really want to say the F word right now, and I don't usually cuss much on YouTube, but it's a mind duck, you know, it, it's, it messes with my head, the scale does. And I know I'm not alone. I know some of you are with me on this. You know, you do, you, you do great on your plan or whatever, or you're eating healthy or whatever you want to call it. And then you jump on the scale thinking, oh, I'll be at least a couple pounds down. And then you're not. And then it's like, oh my gosh, you know, outrage, devastation, the end of the world. Here's a story. So this was me. This was me within the last few weeks. So I'm on this long trip in the van, right? And I was gone almost seven weeks and I did a ton of hiking. For those of you who follow me regularly, you, you might know this. I, I did a ton of hiking. I did great hikes, exertive hikes. Uh, I was feeling good and I was feeling strong. And I got home thinking, oh, I bet I've lost some weight. My clothes aren't really fitting any differently, but when you're as big as I am and you wear mostly elastic waisted stuff and things like that, you can't always tell in your clothes right away. Plus, it, it would take a big weight loss for me to even really notice, kind of, you know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, I know I have lost weight on this trip. I was so active and I did so great, blah, blah, blah. No, I get home and I and I'm in the back of my mind, I've already know about rejecting the diet culture. And so I knew I shouldn't even weigh myself or, but I did it anyway. And I, it made me feel terrible just as predicted because I did not lose one single pound. And for me, this was just such a wake up and a reminder that I look to the scale and that it can undermine weeks of work, undermine weeks of great stuff. I mean, hikes, I, f I know I'm stronger. I'm, I'm proud of myself. I was um, and am healthier, stronger, better because of that activity, because of what I did. And I allowed it to all be completely washed away from the number that I saw come up on the scale. And I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? And I, I do. I need to get rid of the scale, but we'll, we'll work on that because when the scale is around, it's too big of a temptation for me and I have a very hard time not doing it. So let me collect my thoughts. I'm coming right back. Okay. So another thing that dieting over time does to you is it erodes your self-confidence. It erodes your um, confidence and your ability to make decisions. And 
just undermines your confidence altogether in so many ways. Like think about being on a diet and making a commitment to follow the rules of the diet. And then every time you don't follow the rules, you beat yourself up, guilt and shame and judgment on yourself, right? You figure if you beat yourself up enough, then you won't do it again. So you'll be perfect next time. So you, you end up, because we're all human and because, here's the thing, that they have studies in the book that show, and, and we all, I think, kind of know this, but when you go on a diet, when you go on something that is going to restrict calories or fats or carbohydrates or anything, your body doesn't know you're just trying to get to a healthy weight. Your body gets a message of famine, of food scarcity, food shortage, right? And so then when you have access to food again, your body will make up for that deprivation, will make up for that restriction by pulling in everything that it can. And what the body will then pull in is at least equal to, if not greater than everything that you have restricted. In other words, once you loosen up um, the diet restrictions or whatever, then you are going to naturally gain that weight back plus some. And this has been literally the story of my adult life. Who's with me? I know I am not alone. I started when I was, you know, well, I dieted even in our, even on and off when I was young. And I was, I was thin when I was young. I was uh, pretty lean and pretty healthy when I was young. But uh, it didn't stop me because, you know, teenagers, I didn't have quite a flat stomach. And I, you know, there were certain things that I wanted that I that I didn't have. And so I was always came up short somehow. We always do this to ourselves, right? I wasn't there was a standard I wasn't living up to. I was never comfortable in my body. But um, I really started to diet seriously more in my mid mid 20s or so. And what was my point with this? <laughs> what was my point? I don't even remember. Yes, I remember what I was going to say. So when you go on this restrictive diet, you lose weight and then you lose, then you gain the weight back again. There's self-recrimination, there's judgment, there's shame, there's blame, there's guilt. There is um, self self-judgment, self-hatred even, self-disgust, like you did it again. How could you? Those are just the things that I say to myself, whether I'm doing it consciously or whether it's under the surface and I'm not even, not even really calling it out. Those are the things that I feel. And over time, it erodes your confidence and your ability, you feel like, to make decisions and to trust yourself. So, Intuitive eating is a path whereby you can try to first strip away the rules and the baggage from the diets from before and give yourself an open space, give yourself an open field, give yourself a, a clean slate with which to discover step by step, rediscovering your hunger rediscovering when you feel full, rediscovering what foods make you feel good, what makes you, what what foods make you feel vibrant. What all of that whole process, discovering those cues, tell reading the signals of your body, getting back in touch with your body, appreciating your body for what it is and for what it does for you. This is big for me because I have so many judgments against my body. But I need to and want to, and only on occasion when I really think about it, do I give thanks for this miraculous body that does so much for me, that I get to walk around in, that I have so many privileges and so many good things that that I shouldn't take for granted. The health to be able to walk around, the means by which to travel and to be able to do these things, the, all of it. And so I'm so much more than a number. I'm so much more than that reflection. I'm so much more than that extra weight that I carry. And and so are you. So are we all. And so I want to get to a place where it 
becomes free and natural, where I can let go of guilt and shame. And that is what this book is trying to kind of walk through. So the first thing you have to do is just reject all that stuff that's gone before to be in an open place where you can rediscover. And I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that space and that freedom. I'm ready to release the guilt and shame. I'm ready to love my body for what it is and for what it does for me and for all of those things, for every, for the fact that I'm sitting here right now, breathing and sitting and, and thinking about my next trip and all those things I get to do. I want to be in that space. So one of the other things that the book talks about is is treating ourselves with compassion. And I've heard this many places and I have used it when I used to be a life coach talking to clients and stuff. It's a very powerful concept and it's so good because we forget. We know all these great things and then we forget and then we forget to use them as tools and we forget to incorporate them into our lives. And this is a big one. So we're supposed to treat ourselves in this process and in everything you're doing in life. I swear to you, let's just do this. Let's make a pact to do this, okay? Tell me in the comments if you're in on the pact. Let's do this and encourage each other. So what we want is we have this diet and uh, shame and guilt and everything. What they're saying is with intuitive eating, there's no way you can do it wrong. Every single thing that happens is just to teach you, just a lesson, just something to notice as you go on with the process. So there's no need to stop the process because one way or another, as long as you're continuing in the process, you will get there, right? There's no way not to if you just decide you're not going to give up. Here's the analogy that's so powerful that I want us to make a pact about is the analogy of being a parent of a toddler who's learning to walk and to literally treat yourself like you were that parent teaching the toddler. So when a toddler's learning to walk, we never discourage, we never judge, we never have the thought that you're never going to walk. What's wrong with you? Don't you have any sense of balance? Right? We would never even have those thoughts for our toddler, for anybody's child, right? And yet we do it to ourselves all the time. And we just need to see that we are that toddler. We're learning something new. We have tons of baggage we, that took time to develop and to, and to be there to carry around. So we have to give ourselves this time and the space and the freedom, free of all our judgments and free of all our all our distaste and, and negativity towards ourselves, just opening up that space of being so encouraging to ourselves, so loving to ourselves, just keeping, propping ourselves back up, knowing we're getting there, knowing it's all part of the process, knowing that every stumble is just, is just a further step on the road. It's just more progress. It's one step closer, even if it doesn't look like it. I love that concept so much. I've used it and then I forget it. And now I want to use it again. And every time we're judging ourselves, we have to bring that up. We are the toddler. We're, if, you're, if you're in a growth mindset at all, if you're going through your life and you are growing and you are changing and you are seeking and you are wanting to be better than you were before and, and have all this happiness and these things that you want, if you're in that growth, then you are just in the process of changing and we have to have that compassion with ourselves and we have to be that supportive of, of ourselves and that positive to ourselves. And so I don't know what we're going to do to remind ourselves. A lot of times I'll do sticky notes on windows and in my car and stuff. I'll do things like that kind of help me to just prompt or I can set up reminders on my phone. Like just to be so gentle with ourselves. Can we be so gentle with ourselves that we never feel bad enough to give up, that we never feel bad enough to binge eat because what does it matter anyway? I already fell off the wagon. I already made one mistake. What's 10 more? Because it really doesn't matter because this is too hard because I'm never going to do it. 
Those are things I've said to myself. I don't think I'm alone. It's not going to be easy. It's already, it's already very challenging. But as long as I say... It, it's like getting to the top of that mountain, right? It's like, I can just take the next couple of steps. I've got all day. I've got all the time in the world and I can take a couple of more steps. I can see this setback and I can sit with it and then I can take another step forward. And it is all, all journey. It's, 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 life is all journey. It's not about a destination. It's all about journey and those little things along the way that we can use to sustain ourselves and to inspire ourselves, right? Okay, let me go to my notes. Let me see if I have any closing thoughts. Um, big stuff. Principle one is very big stuff. Okay, I really think that's it. That might be all I wanted to cover. <laughs> Principle one. Reject the diet mentality. Woo! Reject it. Tell it to get lost. Let's do this. Get back to basics, back to our intuition. Our bodies know how to do this. We just have to kind of get out of the way. That's what I'm convinced of. Our body knows. Our bodies are miraculous. They know everything. They know what's good for us, what's not. They know when we're hungry, when our body needs to be fed, and when it doesn't. And we just have to get back that trust, listen to those cues, all of that. And this whole book will take us through the cycle. will take us through the whole process. Just the first step is to try to start with a little bit of a clean slate. And then number two, just to be so compassionate with ourselves through the process because we're going to need it. We're going to need it. And I know I'm not the only one, but I have so much crap, so many thoughts around it, so many... Um, guilty feelings, so many shameful feelings, so many not good enough feelings around this topic. And I am so ready to let that go. I'm so ready to let that go. I'm so ready to accept myself where I am now. And the book hasn't talked about this yet, but I'm working on it consciously myself right now having gratitude for the body that I have and just walking with the confidence that I know my worth and that my worth is not a number on the scale. My worth is not how I look to somebody who's passing by. My worth is not um, being attractive to the opposite sex. My worth is not in so many of these things that I have made it about before. And so it's a releasing of all that. I'm so ready to do that. I'm so ready to do that. Uh, it, it feels lighter just saying that out loud. I feel like I've lost weight. <laughs> I feel like I've lost weight already. And I haven't lost a single pound. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, I'm sorry. So this is it. We're on the journey. Let me know if you're in. Um, I'll put the links to the books in the description and the and the um, the whole um, what do you call it playlist on the card at the very end of this video, which is might even be up now. So you made it to the end of another video. Thank you for watching. I will catch you next time. <laughs>